Alice Cinema back, another edition. How we doing out there? Good, great, yeah, yeah. wonderful. As you see on your screen, your dial. However, you are choosing to join me today. The bird with the crystal plumage. The bird with the crystal plumage. Sam Delmas, good old Sammy Delmas, is an American writer living in Rome who inadvertently witnesses a brutal attack on a woman in a modern art gallery. A brutal attack on a woman in a modern art gallery. Powerless to help, he grows increasingly obsessed with the incident. Convinced that something he saw that night holds the key to identifying the maniac terrorizing Rome, he launches his own investigation parallel to that of the police, heedless of the danger to both himself and his girlfriend Julia, spelled with a G. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, you know, it's like a Jeff spelled with a G. I have never in my life met a man <laughs> by the name of Jeff who spells it with a G that I liked. <laughs> I'm not saying that's how it is. I've never met a Julia with spelled with a G, so I can't comment, but uh, a couple of the Jeffs that I've met spelled with a G, mm. <laughs> nope. Not a fan, sir. Not a fan. So, uh, this is a Dario Argento. Dario, Dario, De Rio. Uh, Argento piece. His directorial debut, actually. Uh, we'll get into him here in a second. Uh, it stars uh, Sam, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Tony Masante, who plays Sam. Susie Kendall, who plays Julia with a G. Mm hmm. Uh, Enrico Maria uh, Salerno, who plays Inspector Morazzini. I'm actually, I think I'm doing another movie that um, uh, Enrico Salerno was in uh, right around the corner here. A nice, a proper western, proper spaghetti western uh, he was in. You got uh, Ava Renzi, who plays Monica. You got Umberto Rajo, who plays Alberto. Umbert, Umberto, Umberto plays Alberto. Uh, Renato Romano plays Carlo. Giuseppe Castellano plays Monte Maria, Mar Mario Adorf. Berto plays uh, Consalvi. Pino Patti plays Faena. Gildo Di Marco plays Garulo the Pimp, who I thought he was pretty great. I love he's a stuttering pimp. May hold the key to the murders, and he uh, he stutters and to. to correct himself he says so long he, he'll tag every sentence he'll be you know he'll kind of bumble through it and so long he ends with his uh so we can call him fucking so long garulo uh Werner peters who plays the antique dealer and reggie nalder who plays needles the assassin so you got it written and directed by dario argento produced by salvatore argento production manager was camillo tetti Director of photography and, you know, a lot of these Italian, these Giallo, as they call them. I, uh, you know, like that show, I forget the fucking movie, but I had Tyler on and he kept on saying Giallo and it, it pissed me off because, it, I mean, playfully, of course, because I, I was, I'm was i annoyed that I think it gets overused because Giallo, in, a, in its essence, is just an Italian uh, well, actually, it means yellow, but it in the film sense it means mystery and thrillers. And I, the fucking whore crowd, <laughs> annoys the shit out of me because I feel like they, if it's a foreign film, they'll just say giallo, and it's like not. <laughs> I think you can only say it's a giallo film. It's a, if it's a mystery thriller horror from Italy. I don't, I don't think that it should get used for anything else even if it does play like a pulp, a pulp paperback, like, uh, you know, come the, the name comes from. I just, I don't know. If it's a mystery thriller horror coming out of America, Canada, New Zealand, you don't have to say giallo. I, I, it's just a personal opinion. I just think it's overused. But I, I understand I'm talking to a very niche group of people because <laughs> it's specifically the horror crowd and it's, uh, even more specific, the whore crowd that says Giallo when they shouldn't. <laughs> so, but this one, the the bird with the crystal plumage, it it actually is Giallo. It actually, you could say it changed the game of Giallo in terms of filmmaking. But I I don't even like on some level I don't even 
like saying it in terms of filmmaking, but if it came from pulp paperbacks in Italy, they can just stay that way. I don't know why a mystery thriller out of Italy can't just be a mystery thriller horror out of Italy. We can just, I don't know why we have to spice things up all the time. Um, Man, this arrow box set has everything on it. Uh, director of photography, uh, Vittorio uh, St- Storaro. And that's the big thing. Uh, the, these these films coming out of Italy during this time that were uh, different uh, than us, the, the states. I don't know why I said us. I have nothing to do with it. It's like when somebody said, you know, says, uh, oh, you know, they're talking about their favorite sports team or whatever, you know, the the lions or fucking the cowboys we did this you did nothing your fat ass sat there and watched the did in eight while they played their hearts out so i'm not going to say uh we here in the states i just uh i did nothing i contributed nothing um i'm losing my dude what what a couple weeks <laughs> What a couple weeks. Step up and take an at-bat on the microphone. Production and costume designer, Dario uh, Michelli. I'm sure I was about to make a point there, and like I do, I have all this build-up and fucking just no salient point whatsoever. Ah, <laughs> oh, stop laughing at your own shit. You understand. You gotta understand. I've been trying to nip the whole laughing at my own silliness in the butt. Just, I don't know, in the, in the bud. Um... It makes me feel a little bit more comfortable as I sit and talk to you alone like a crazy person if I laugh at the silliness of it. So it's a coping mechanism is what I'm saying to you. It's a coping mechanism. Uh, editor was Franco uh, Fritticelli. Uh, Fritticelli. God damn it, John. And then music by one of my favorite composers of all the times ever. Ennio Morricone, R.I.P. in 2020. Though I don't... The way that 2021 has been... I don't even count it as 2021. It just feels like bled over shit from 2020. And it just continues. And, of course, you know, as I'm doing this podcast now, mask mandates uh, are sweeping the nation. Um, I know in my city, they just, uh, just today, actually, mask mandates for the school. And, and if you're wondering whether I'm pro or for that, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> pro or for, if I'm pro or con that, you mind your own goddamn business. That's not what this show's about. I actually, I don't think I, I, it's, I've made any secret. I, I think I've said a couple of, quite a few shows where I stand on that. Anyway. It just feels like 2020 is bleeding over into 2021. It just feels like one big Enyo Morricone death. <laughs> feels like we're still grieving. Um, I feel like in this little booklet that Arrow gives and another goddamn awesome uh, release that they did for this, the bird uh, with the crystal plumage on 4K, um, in the booklet... Um, Listen, I'm going to read to you for a second. I should do books on tape. But in this little booklet, I thought uh, this was an interesting uh, piece of information for a lot of you that, um, you know, you're not super nerdy in uh, into films like I am. <clears throat> One of Italian giallo thrillers, thriller's strengths is the array of suspects, victims, and assorted eccentrics from all works of life that populate giallo land. A rogues gallery of distinctive faces make it easy to keep track of who's who, from butterfly collectors and scientists to glamour photographers and priests, the collection of giallo characters were memorably brought to life by the best actors and actresses actresses the European genre uh, cinema had to uh, genre cinema had to offer. So it kind of just I don't know, paint you a picture. Like you had these, I'm trying to think of who would be the equivalent to maybe like a Bill Mosley or the like in our horror world where you're, they became staples of the, the, the problem is that these films feel such more on a big budget than, you know, say if we were to do 
something like this. Well, especially back then. I mean, this film was shot in 67, came out in 70. That's when we put fucking, you know, money into shit. And now we don't, don't put money into, and we can't. Uh, well, not we again, not we, but, you know, they can't. There's no, yeah, there's so many avenues to get films made now that, you know, people are willing to throw money at it, but not an absorbent an amount. No, no, no. Um, but these, these films, this, I don't know. I, I'm sitting there watching it and I, and I like it. Of course, it's not a bad film. You know, I don't, it's, it's nothing fucking, I, I, I'm sitting there watching it and I'm thinking who, uh, some of the younger cats that, that I mingle with, who could I show this to? And boy, the list was very small. And of course, like I said, I, I get annoyed and I la- latch on to certain things. I, I don't know how I have an anger problem. I don't know how I end up getting mad at. <laughs> I don't know how I ended up getting mad at some of the 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 people that I uh, that I run with that I hang with. Um for not being able to show them this because their attention spans wouldn't be able to take it. And also because it's, I, even though I think there's a great gender, gender reversal that you could talk about in terms of it's kind of ahead of its time. But, um, because it didn't have three endings and because you could maybe tell who the killer, which I still, I don't know. I don't know if it plays well, but I, I got to think and I was like, man, this is such a slow burn for some of these cats. And, uh, I think the ending, I, to me, the ending plays well, but because of what you had to sit through for the end, it's, it's, I don't know. It's not like a portal sequence in fucking end game, you know, could two, two completely different movies, completely different levels that they need to be put on. But I, I'm sitting there getting mad because I'm like, oh man, this was so huge for back then. Can you appreciate it? Like I do. Or if you you'd be like, ah, I wasted an hour and thirty minutes. <laughs> I don't I don't think so. I don't think so. And then I got to fucking nerd out a little bit more. Uh the commentary on this, uh let me go through some of these bonus features. Fucking great, dude. Uh especially the commentary. I haven't had that fun with a commentary in a while, like not to say yeah, well, I had had fun while learning. <laughs> You know, because I'm stupid. I, I I listen to the Bill Nye podcast because I have fun while I'm learning. Because you have to kind of hold my hand and say, make it a little humorous. You just can't be like, blah, 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 and just give me facts, 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 facts. I, that, you toss in a joke every now and then. Um, but anyway, the the commentary on this is with uh, Cho- Troy Howarth, who was the uh, author of So Deadly, So Perverse, 50 Years of Italian Giallo Films. He made me laugh out loud a couple of times, and I learned a thing or two about a thing or two. You know, like all the shit that fucking uh, Argento took for being a misogynist, you know, because of the violence that he shows. That's another thing, too, about the, the, uh, the circles that I run in is the violence shown towards women. Um, well, two things. Horror films, at least the people that I mingle with, which I'd say more are not giant film fans than are. Um, you guys, you, you guys aren't big, uh, whore fans, are you? I just thought that everyone liked to go see a dumb little whore flick. Like that's when you, like I, you know how like people like turn on <clears throat> the office now, like, you know, I'm gonna turn my brain off. I'll throw on parks and rec or whatever. I thought that's what horror movies were. Like you would, you would be like, Hey, you want to go see that fucking Jason 42, um, on Friday. You know, we've had a long week, that sort of thing. And it turns out, nope, none of you. And it kind of hurts my heart because, you know, we got some horror films around the corner that you 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 go you go to you go to the theaters uh, with in a to see a horror film with a group. And this anyway, I'm babbling as per usual. What uh, the 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 circles that are on? Oh, Sean, the violence depicted towards women one well one different time if you do that for every single fucking old thing that you watch you are never i guess i should be more specific because that's that's what we do now we we gotta fucking 
Anyway, <clears throat> if you keep on going, you're never going to enjoy a lot of these older films if you're like a, a, a new cinephile, like you're a 20, 21, 22 year old something cinephile. You're never going to be able to appreciate where a lot of the stuff that we get to enjoy, the, the predecessors. You know, if you keep on hanging on, fuck, I think the, hanging on, you know, social fucking, I think the thing that blows my mind the most is that we're talking about a movie. Like, I I can understand if, like, I was making you sit down and watch, like, a documentary or a news, here, watch this hour and a half newsreel about a woman, multiple women that get murdered and shit like that. All right, I could see, but anyway, actually, I, 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 I wouldn't be able to see. I would still say the same shit I always do. Oh, that guy killed that girl? What a fucking piece of shit. <laughs> I, I can differentiate between the... Anyway, I got kind of bummed because I was like, oh, there's one scene in particular, and obviously fans of the film uh, know which one I'm talking about, you know, with the black gloves and, and the pantes. Well, I could... Nothing gets shown in that scene, right? right? The fans of the film. Nothing gets shown in that scene. I see people, big fucking deal. Uh, at least in the circles that I read, a couple of the women would be like, this is fun. And, and I'm just like, well, what? Ah. Used to go to movies and not be offended. I had an ex-girlfriend uh, once. She fucking loved the shit. I miss that. <laughs> I miss that. Wait, I took her to see uh, Devil's Rejects back in oh, oh whatever. And when that lady with her husband's uh, sawed off, peeled, cut off face is is tied to her face. That's right. A, a face tied to her face and she runs out in the middle of the road and gets tattooed by a semi and just explodes. Uh, my ex just lost her shit. She was laughing so hard. It's tough to find that nowadays, mate. <laughs> fucking. I, either that or I'm just looking in the wrong places, but I blame it on the fucking location for sure. For sure. And due to my inability to move on from other stuff, but that's none of your goddamn business. You know, you have someone in your life, saves your life, erases you from theirs, and you've done a lot of drugs, which prompt a lot of flashbacks. It's tough to move on, mate. It's tough to move on. It's okay, though. I, I'm i I'm happy to be here doing this dumb show for you. Now she could probably she could probably make the argument that I'm not using the time well, <laughs> you know. She saved my life, and now this is what I'm choosing to do with it. And I would I would see her point. <laughs> I would I'd be like, yep, yep. You know what? No wonder you left me without saying a word. <laughs> That's no, no, no. I I know better. I'm trash. That's why she left. <laughs> but you know, some things are hard to deal with, like the. Like the uh, gender reversal and the bird of the crystal plumage. Great segue, boy. Great segue. <laughs> uh, what are some other? Um, it, what was they saying about the commentaries? I had fun and I and I and I laughed and I learned something. I I watched you know the the one for Drive. I just had um, Steve Wang on. God damn, he was awesome. Um, and I've never done a uh, speaking of that Steve Wang interview. I didn't realize how much of a fucking nerd and how much I geeked out. I did three costume changes for that show. You want to know how many I had done prior to that for the show? This is almost 200 hours worth of content. You want to know how many costume changes I did before that? Zero. (laughs) Zero. But I'm listening to that commentary for Drive, and it's just them with inside jokes busting fucking balls for two hours, which, you know, like I said, that's fine. But I'm more of, as I've said on this show before, I'm more of the uh, Frank Darabont type. Like, I... I don't know, man. I'm a fuck. My dad fucking cursed me with a sickness. If I could go back and I could not be into this whole fucking movie shit, I would in a heartbeat. I would in a fucking heartbeat. Because I'm almost tired of staring at screens in the general. Uh, in general, now, you know, I do it for. A, I should say it's it's not all that bad. There's worse things that you know to have somebody who reaches out to me to ask me to review their stuff. I mean, you know, I need to be especially given who it's Arrow. It's fucking MVD. It's well go. Of course I'll do that. Some of you others, no, bro. No, I won't. Because the workload of just those three is enough. <laughs> but, um, you know, it. I, 
there's plenty of worse things. I have a, I have a good time talking about these things, especially like I, I I'm and I've told the the guys that um you know I email back and forth that ask me you know if I want to do this shit. I, I I'm straightforward with them. Look, I just will I'll not like you don't have to email me and be like, hey, did you see this email? Did you want this one? I, if yeah, I saw the email, and if I wanted it, I would have emailed you. <laughs> you know, I I I pick and choose which ones that uh, are worth my time and I would never god damn it turn down a Argento film you know I I think he I I I mean I'm not going to call him the Italian uh, Hitchcock you know I think Hitchcock told stories in a next level way whereas there's something about these giallos gialli um I don't know we could have been a little bit sharper couldn't we i feel like i'm the only one that'll be like hey i love argento his filmography could still use some work in fact i i don't remember if it was a commentary or one of the uh um many awesome bonus features but somebody i it was like it was like it was a bittersweet comment because they were like saying well he wasn't really like super misogy- misogynist and smutty until like his later years, Mother of Tears, which is like post 2000 and, and Dracula 3D and I'm here to tell you, I don't shit on most films I don't, uh, you know, I'll, I'll just say you know, it's a miracle to get made, but uh, you, you've you listened to the show before um, Dracula 3D is among one of the most terrible things I have ever seen <laughs> And I know, I I know, I gotta say, well, I guess I'm laughing at my jokes, but um, I know that I pissed off a couple of uh, Argento fans. I swear, in the attack, I some of you need to be more honest about the work. Like, hey, I love Lucio Fulci. Hear me, I love him, but don't call him a genius or brilliant. Or <laughs> we we gotta stop throwing those words around so fucking willy nilly. <laughs> no. You disagree, horror fans? I love him. Hello. Calm down. I love him. I love Argento. I love Bava. Just, I, I don't know. I think uh, this horror fans crack me up. Ah, oh, she she was great in Hereditary. The fact that she didn't win an Oscar is preposterous. No, you're preposterous. Did you watch the other films nominated? <laughs> Just because she could open her mouth, really. What am I doing? Um, listen to some of these bonus features. I think I've said that like five times. Black gloves and screaming memes. An interview with critic Cat Ellinger exploring uh, the film's themes and its relationship to both Giallo and Frederick Brown's novel. Yeah, it was a Frederick Brown novel uh, called The Screaming Mimi. I think it came out in 1949, and uh, much more sexual, if I remember correctly, as she was saying. By the way, Cat Ellinger too, fucking great. I. If I didn't need to do this show for my own this this particular episode for my own sanity, I would have reached out to Cat because I thought she had a ton of good stuff to say. In fact, um, she was talking about kind of how uh, Argento had handled all the mis- misogyny um, hubbub, and I for- I'm not going to even attempt to say what he said, but basically paraphrasing um i'd rather look at a beautiful woman murdered than an ugly woman and obviously fucking feminists were uh none too pleased with that and you know it probably a they didn't understand it was a joke and but two the joke was in poor taste like you know it's kind of like tarantino on rogan when he was just like talking about the Bruce Lee thing. <laughs> he was like, anybody else besides Shannon Lee can suck a dick. And it's like, ah, someone's going to make that homophobic because the way that you're using it is negative and bad. <laughs> okay. So uh, it's just... <laughs> uh, what? How do I get so fucking sidetracked? Uh, Kat j- just entertained the shit out of me. I, I wish I would have had her on the, sh- the show, but I needed to get this... I need to do something to to ease ease my pain. <laughs> and go, looking back on it, the way that this show is going, it's not helping. <laughs> it's not helping at all. It's actually making it worse because I'm bombing. I'm bombing for an Arrow release that I believe in. 
Oh, the Frederick Brown knock. It was a little bit more sexual. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Sean. Uh, the, the the screaming Mimi, Mimi novel was far more sexual than the, uh, the, the film is, The Bird with the Crystal Plumage. Um, and I forget, you know, he'd rather, uh, Argento said, uh, I'd rather see a beautiful woman murdered than, a, there we go. That's how the Tarantino thing came about, than an ugly woman. And actually, uh, as Kat pointed out, this, you know, the kind of having fun or, or what it is, this obsession because it is, it is an obsession. Edgar Allan Poe wrote, The death of a beautiful woman is unquestionably the most poetical topic in the world. And I said that in Philosophy of Composition, 1846. Uh, interesting, right? It's been around uh, quite a long time. And I, and I also found it interesting, too, that it's kind of, why is that? Why is that? You know, especially when, if if we care so, this is wild. Why am I going here? I just ask a question and then I'm going to move on. Um, why? It, how did this become? You know, and currently in the modern ro- world, how do we, me included, not know how to treat them well? It's been all these years. It's the most poetical thing. Um, but yet we can't seem to get it right, <laughs> me included, because I'm a toxic white male, but I'm acknowledging it and I'm working on it. I just thought it was an interesting thing that, uh, and also a bummer while I was watching it because, it was, you know, I, I just, I, showing it to someone who's 22, I could see, you know, oh, it's okay. It's okay. It didn't wow me. Well, fucking <laughs> wowed audiences back then. It scared the shit out of them. But why is it that it, that we have this weird? I'm sure there's plenty of documentaries out there that explore the topic. But yeah, you know, Final Girls, that thing. But what is it? What is it about a woman in 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 next wearing next to nothing, and we have a stalker and a slasher after? Her? And then you bring it right round from a, a therapeutical stand. If you went to therapy about it, and it has to do with a male imp- impotence. <laughs> this is so weird. I was, I was just kind of like, yeah, it is the, one of the most poetical topics in the world, and yet we still can't get it right. <laughs> it's kind of a, it's kind of a bummer that almost two hundred years later we can't get it right. <laughs> Fuck, we still have to have these conversations. Oh. Um, yeah, Frederick Brown's novel, The Screaming Mimi, The Power of Perception, a visual essay on the cinema of Dario Argento by Alexandra Heller Nicholas, author of Devil's Advocates, Suspiria, and the Giallo Canvas, Art, Excess, and Horror Cinema. That is, um, Alexandra, that is a, that is a lengthy title. That is a lengthy title, but I'm sure it's a good book. And I was also in, informed... I, I, well, every single part of the bonus features, I I had learned something. Some things I was like, yeah, yeah, that probably was like that back then. And then other things where I was like, oh, cool, all right. Um, how the film almost didn't get picked up if it kind of weren't for a secretary that said, this scared the shit out of me. You you should pick this film up. It'll terrify audiences, I tell you. Anyway, uh, Alexander uh, reflects on the recurring theme of perception and the role of art. In Argento's filmography, nothing too. Yes, this this is in terms of Argento's. Um, I wanted to comment on that. <laughs> in terms of Argento's style, as it were, I don't. The, I don't think that it really came into their own like they like it is discussed. I don't think he came into his own like it is discussed on this particular film. It is a. I am not going to argue that in terms of your directorial debut, you knocked it out of the park. You became an international sensation, a sensation, and with good reason. Um, but I know, like you know how the the most obvious one is like John Woo has the doves, right? The white doves. Um, I don't think that, I mean, I would argue that it's more Vittori that has a particular style 
um, in this film than Argento's direction. Now, calm down, horror fans. I still love Argento. But as I was rewatching it, I haven't seen this film in fucking 20 years. And as I was rewatching it, I was like, well, now wait a minute. Especially with the commentary and the bonus bonus features. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> I think sometimes we we rip things apart just merely because they ex- exist but other times i think that we also may blow too much smoke on occasion um and there was a lot of oh he really comes into his own it's his it's his directorial debut he looks comfortable i'm not going to argue that but as far as the argento style i i think you know that this it was honed in what many would consider as opus which was suspiria and just because I feel like lashing out today, I will annoy the uh, horror crowd even more. The remake of Suspiria, I actually liked more than the Argento original. Fight me. They're both good. Why can't they both be good, horror crowd, I ask you? Why can't they both be good? You always, when I say things like this, you, you'll DM me and you'll be like, I can't believe that, that dot, dot, dot. Well, you're an idiot to infer that I like one and not the other. I like one more than the other. I can like both. <laughs> it's okay. And you can too. You can too. I'm not going to stop you. Uh, Crystal Nightmare, an interview with uh, writer-director Dario Argento. An Argento icon, an interview with actor Gildo DiMarco. Ava's Talking, an archival interview with the uh, actress Ava Renzi. The original Italian and international theatrical trailers. A 2017 Texas Frightmare trailer. Image galleries, illustrated. Uh, yeah, the book that I was talking about. I had some nice, uh, nice bathroom reading with this one. Illustrated collector's booklet <laughs> featuring writing, uh, writing on the film by Howard Hughes. Jack Seabrook, and a new essay by Rachel Nisbet. All good. Like that excerpt that I read from you, or that I bumbled through a little bit earlier, um, that was Howard Hughes uh, writing that. Um, you got a fold-out double-sided poster, which was pretty key account. Um, new commissioned artwork by Obviously Creative, a six-double-sided postcard-sized lobby card reproduction art cards. Let me try that again. Six double-sided postcard-sized lobby card reproduction art cards. Whew. Limited edition packaging with a reverse reversible sleeve and newly commissioned artwork by Obviously Creative. Um, I wish I had a better camera because the uh, lobby cards, the shit that I couldn't say, they're pretty cute. In fact, I still might. I, I just like it like if the post looks official. <laughs> and a lot of the times my posts don't look official. This is where I do my this is where I do my thing. It's the social media stuff that kills me. I don't know how, what hashtags I should be using. I've I've done hours of content for our arrow. I don't even know if they know I'm alive. So, uh, you should check this one out. You should check this one out. I, I, I would argue that even some of you younger cats, it does not end how you would expect it. Now, stay off your phone for the first 45 minutes, even though I know it will be hard for you. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's a fun film. And if you don't want to buy the $48 uh, limited edition box set because you haven't seen it yet and you're not going to take my advice, I believe it's streaming on Tubi which is free, T-U-B-I, which is free. Stream it, like it, love it, buy the goddamn thing, and support Arrow, because some of us still like physical media. Let me tell you. Some of us still like the physical media. I, I, I know that you don't get it, but it's no different than your Funko Pops. In fact, I would argue on some level it's better than the Funko Pop because... I can put on a movie and be entertained for an hour and a half, two hours. I'm not going to stare at a Funko Pop for two hours. <laughs> I know some of you in this show would and have taken offense by that L- Get Arrow's release of uh, the bird with the crystal plumage. Great murder mystery, Giallo, because it is Italian. Ella Cinema. Aero video, the bird with the crystal plumage. This box set is available now. So don't drag your feet. Stream it if you gotta first, and then pick up pick it up. 
support Arrow, support the film, support horror, because what's happening to horror amongst some of you youngins? Gotta have the horror. Ellison, I'm gone.